dear audience, especially Universitas Terbuca students, wherever you are. We are in Coastal and Marine Areas Management MMPI 5104 class today, and we will discuss about oceans health and the future of our fisheries. Oceans contribution to the future of our fisheries is very relevant. Marine ecosystems, goods and services are being affected by global change, particularly in coastal waters. The degradation of these uh, goods and services have consequences for the human health and well-being. So, therefore, new interdisciplinary approaches that collate biological, social, economic and human health knowledge are needed to tackle these changes. The idea here is to link the marine living resources with environmental, human and health dimensions. So you have three components in the system. In one side you have the marine resources, where you have different topics like fisheries biology, fish physiology, parasitology, anthropology, economy. On the other side you have the marine ecosystems, where you have marine biology, oceanography, climatology. And in the third topic you have health and well-being, so medicine and social science. All these three boxes <coughs> constitute what is called the oceans and human health topic, which is an emerging key topic uh, in marine science that tries to uh, investigate and uh, uh, knowledge the complex relationships that exist between the marine ecosystems and uh, our health and well-being. This topic started in the United States mm, some decade, decades ago and is slowly being uh, approached in Europe. In the first week books uh, that were written about this topic, we have different ones like this Oceans and Human Health by Willey, or this one by Noah, or this one from Marine, European Marine Board. Also some others like the condition of fishes. All these uh, books were the first of, it, of their kind to explain the links between the marine ecosystems and the human health. So when we go for this topic the, of sense and human health, we have to consider two aspects. One is the benefits and the other one is the risk. The benefits from the sea and the risk coming from the sea. Regarding the benefits, we, we see uh, that there are three main benefits. One is seafood in relation to a healthy diet. And the second one is the marine recreational activities and human health. And the third one is the medicines of the sea. I will particularly concentrate on the first topic, which is the one most related to fisheries. Regarding the fisheries, as I tell you, this is a, a, a very hot topic. You know that the seafood from fisheries provides several benefits. We have to distinguish two main types of components of the fish that are related to human health. There are others, of course, but these would be may maybe the two most important ones. One is the protein and the other one is the fatty acids omega-3. The protein, <coughs> we must consider that for many people around the world, particularly coastal populations, the fish is still the primary source of protein because they cannot find other types of protein as we found in meat. On the other hand, the fish is rich in omega-3 fatty acids that you, we will see has several benefits for our health. This fish must be considered that is taken by fisheries around the world, but particularly by small-scale fisheries. Small-scale fisheries represent over 90% of the fishers around the world and uh, they take nearly half of the catch around the world. Small scale fisheries, the, the fish they catch goes mostly 90-95% to human consumption, not for uh, feeding uh, animals or feeding fish in aquaculture, for example. Still, the small scale fisheries are very important in developing countries but also in developed countries like the European Union, where more than 85% of the vessels are considered small-scale uh, fishing vessels measuring less than 12 meters, meters length. And the rest, industrial fisheries, representing less than 
uh, vessels measuring more than uh, 12 meters length, trawlers or processors mainly. This is a sector which is highly subsidized, including small-scale fisheries, despite small-scale fisheries have less subsidized than industrial ones. So, again, when we talk about the seafood benefits, we need to consider two th important things. One is that despite, as, to as I told you before, uh, fish and, or seafood in general is the most important source of protein for some coastal populations in developed countries, what it needs to be taken into account is in that in our countries, in developed, developed countries, the protein we have in fact, is in excess. We eat too much protein, particularly from meat, cow, pork, what, whatever. So the fish is losing in developing countries. Is losing the uh, in developed countries. Sorry, is losing their importance on human health because it, we find very easily protein elsewhere. On the other, but uh, on on the contrary, what is important in developed countries is the omega-3 fatty acids from the fish because fish is a source of um, omega-3 fatty acids. We know that there are some plants that produce omega-3 fatty acids, but it's not the same type of omega-3 fatty acids that has the same benefits as they do the omega-3 uh, fatty acids derived from marine plants and particularly animals. Why are these, uh, these um, omega-3 fatty acids important for our health? First of all, it, they are important for our cardiovascular health. Here in this figure, you see that the, one of the most um, health problems that we have in, the, in, in developed countries is the increase of the overweight people. This is just an example uh, of the evolution of the number of overweight children around the world. You see that, that there is a uh, an increasing trend of children that are becoming more and more overweight. This is related, uh, obesity is related to many diseases, including the an increase of the cardiovascular risk. This is, for example, another example found in the United Kingdom where you can see the um, obesity prevalence in adults, which is increasing from the 90s to, to 2013. So, what do these uh, omega-3 fatty acids from fish derived from, from seafood to our cardiovascular health? So, there are several studies that demonstrate that uh, an increasing uh, intake by uh, humans in the diet of omega-3 fatty acids from, from the sea is related to a decrease of the um, cardiovascular risk. It's not only the fact that the omega-3 fatty acids are good or, or, or help to prevent cardiovascular risk. It's also uh, important to notice that there are many studies that are linking nowadays the omega-3 fatty acids intake from the fish with the cancer prevention. We see in this uh, study, uh, so cancer, uh, a part um, of uh, cardiovascular disease, is one of the most frequent illness uh, in developed and developing countries. You see in the figure on the top that there is an increasing trend of cancer incidence, not only in industrialized countries, but also in developed countries. So we have now different studies showing that the omega-3 fatty acids uh, intake from, from the seafood is helping to prevent, not to cure, but to prevent uh, the, the certain types of cancer, like you can see in this um, figure in the bottom. Another, another um, uh, hot topic related to omega-3 fatty acids is the fact that we are uh, finding that these omega-3 fatty acids from marine ecosystems are not only good for our uh, physical condition, but also for our uh, mental health. There are now 
uh, an increasing number of studies that demonstrate that they may be linked, the, these omega-3 fatty acids, with the uh, improvement of our mental health. For example, in the prevention or uh, certain disease like depression and Alzheimer. So, for this reason, we are intensifying the studies of the omega-3 fatty acids. And in this project that we developed in uh, La Costa Brava, in northern part of Catalonia, Spain, we, for the first time, analyzed the omega-3 fatty acid contents from all the fish that were landed uh, in the port. So it's basically an analysis of omega-3 fatty acids in local seafood, which is needed to know how may, which is the potential benefits coming from the, your local food to uh, the local population's health. So this is just an example of the different species that we analyzed, showing um, how much omega-3 fatty acid content they had in the muscle. In, in, in this sense, what we did afterwards is crossing the data from the omega-3 fatty acids and landings to see how much omega-3 fatty acids were landed by each species. So we know that fish is landed, but what is important to know is, is not the quantity of protein that is landed for the developed countries, but what is e even increasingly more important is to know how much omega-3 fatty acids is being landed and be available to the general population. So for this reason, we are doing this particular um, sheets that the fish market is using to show the omega-3 fatty acids level of each species so that the consumer can see easily how much omega-3 fatty acids they contain. Of course, you have the benefits from the sea, but then you have the risks, and the risks you have many and increasing. So you have the biotoxins, overfishing, tourism, pathogens, pollution, climate change, and in some countries, like for example Indonesia, tsunamis. Overfishing is a major problem. You know that many uh, stocks worldwide are overfished. You see here in the red color how many, the, which is, are the areas where I they have most of the stocks overfished. So you see that, for example, the Mediterranean is all in red, which means that more than 80% of the stocks are now being overfished. This is for the situation in Europe with a red um, intensive color, e the most problematic uh, uh, situation. So what's happening with this overexploitation? That we have less and less fish, and therefore we have less and less omega-3 fatty acids available for the general population. We can look for alternatives of omega-3 fatty acids, like for example, like aquaculture. Uh, if you see the global fish consumption, we see that the, uh, actually 50% of the, of the fisheries, they go for uh, human consumption and the other 50 go for, um, to feed the, 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 the feed that will feed the, the animals that are raised in aquaculture. So it seems that uh, aquaculture is not an, uh, an effective way to um, give the available omega-3 fatty acids to the uh, general populations. It would be, be much better to concentrate on the omega-3 fatty acids of the wild fish, fish because we will lose much uh, less um, uh, energy and omega-3 fatty acids than consumed through the aquaculture products. Other alternatives of uh, omega-3 fatty acids are zooplankton and algae, but you know that zooplankton is being caught, is being um, is the, the the food prey for um, marine mammals. So we need to really take uh, care if we exploit too much this uh, zooplankton, the marine mammals will suffer from that. So we need to find a balance. Another possibility is that we are n now trying to study is to um, use the fish that have been fallen in disuse. You know that in former times, for example, in the Mediterranean diet, we used to eat a lot of species, more than 40 species. Now, the young people, they eat less than 10 species because it's uh, the most um, gastronomic value. 
So we are losing a lot of fish that is not being uh, used for consumption. And, uh, and, and with this, we are losing a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. Another option to is that we are now studying is to use the again the fish that have fallen in disuse. You know that, for example, in the Mediterranean diet, in former times, we used to eat our grandfathers, our grandparents used to eat more than 40 species of fish. Now the young people eat less than usually eat less than 10 species of, of fish. So what is happening is that we are losing a lot of potential, a lot of species that are being discarded or diet, and, and, and with this, we are losing a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. Another source of omega-3 fatty acids would be the new species that are increasing uh, because of sea warming, and that are complementary sources of omega-3 fatty acids, despite many consumers, because they don't know these new species or these thermophilic species, they are not willing to buy. Climate change is another factor contributing to the risk facing marine resources, and producing uh, through sea warming, for example, in the Mediterranean, distribution shifts, um, impacts on life history tra traits like condition on reproduction, increase in abundance of thermophilic species or decrease in abundance of cold water species. Fish parasites is also an increasing uh, threat to, uh, to seafood. We have seen that, for example, in the Mediterranean, in some regions, the number of parasites are increasing year after year in fish. We don't know why uh, it, this is happening, but this is also affecting the seafood quality and security, and also is affecting the um, productivity of fish because the parasites finally are impacting on the condition, the growth, and the reproduction of certain fish species. Another source of risk is the fish contaminants, whether it is mercury, heavy metals, or microplastics. And therefore, what is important, when you see the balance of the benefits and the risks coming from the seafood, it's important to evaluate in each species, in each season, in each year, in each sea, what is the, the balance with these benefits, omega-3 fatty acids, and the risk coming from these different sources. You have also marine biotoxins, marine biotoxins like ciguatera or tetrodotoxin, also harmful algal blooms, HAPS, which is uh, in some regions like in the Gulf of Mexico in the United States, killing not only the marine fauna of uh, fish, but also posing problems to people. We must say, however, that the, these toxins are being studied in some cases to uh, develop, up, develop new medicines. In this, uh, in this framework, it is important that we establish new marine protected areas that will help to protect not only the habitats, but also the marine resources and the seafood, and of course, the omega-3 fatty acids from the fish. So, the science contribution to human health and well-being is also more than seafood. We have also the health benefits coming from recreational activities, which, for example, are linked to mental health. Mental health, as you see in this figure, is one of the increasing illness in several uh, developed countries. And um, more and more uh, medicines are being prescribed to treat, as you see in this figure, to treat these uh, conditions. So what is offering the sea? What is offering the recreational activities uh, regarding our mental health? So there are several studies conducted by the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom that shows that um, exercising near the, the, the coast is uh, producing uh, um, a stress reduction compared to other um, environmental situations like the countryside or the urban parks. Also, you can measure the happiness. And again, these studies have shown that the marine ecosystems is are producing more happiness to the people, as uh, they report in the questioners, compared to fresh waters, woodlands, grasslands, farmlands, uh, and other uh, environments. So what are the, 
the, the causes from these relationships. So you have, because uh, in uh, the coast, usually you have health, um, lower health inequalities. This, of course, depends from country to country, but in, some, in many countries, the health inequalities are lower in the coast. For example, in the United Kingdom. You have in the, uh, in, in the coast lower, um, lower uh, rates of depression and anxiety, or they, you have also higher rates of physical activity and uh, higher stress reduction. So this is what the overall, all the studies suggest. And finally, uh, just to finalize, we must draw your attention that the marine ecosystems are also providing new marine drugs through the ma uh, marine biotechnology to the pharmacological industry that are being used to cure uh, uh, severe illness, for example, cancer. And this is an uh, area of future research that will be very cha uh, challenging. So, thank you very much. Dear audience, especially Universitat Sterbuka students, wherever you are, we are in Coastal and Marine Areas Management MMPI 5104 class today and we will discuss about biological input for fisheries management.